Uh, again, uh, welcome to the seminar. Dear friends, today we have speaker Renzo Rica, who will tell us about topological cascades through the virtual reconnection. So please. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to everybody. And uh, thanks to the Novosibirsk uh, group uh, for inviting me for this talk. Uh, it's a great pleasure because I have uh, fond memories of my visit uh, to Alexienko's group at the time and uh, well only a few years ago and uh, I am uh, very happy to uh, give you some information about uh, progress uh, on uh, uh, vortex uh, reconnection and cascades. Um, so the motivation for this talk uh, are, um, uh, let me go to the first slide, is uh, to determine uh, a long term, a long stand uh, uh, problem to determine relationships uh, between the structural complexity, uh, in particular physical knots and energy. For physical knots, I mean in this case vortex uh, structures, and quantify energy and helicity transfers in uh, uh, dynamical systems. For this, uh, um, I'll show you how to. Um, introduce new techniques based on the use of not polynomials as an extent and apply new topological techniques to study complex systems. Um, well, um, since uh, the audience is probably quite uh, well informed about vortex dynamics, uh, I will uh, skip uh, backgrounds, uh, but uh, I will duel on uh, aspects uh, of reconnection um, at least for graduate students or for young postdocs uh, is useful to know before getting into uh, the uh, topic of not polynomials. Uh, for simplicity, I will refer to um, a physical tangle made of a network of uh, filaments and filamentary structures uh, in uh, 3D. And uh, well, uh, as you know, uh, this is uh, a big problem uh, in uh, terms of understanding uh, um, uh, stages, uh, la, la, later stages of turbulence developments and transition. A group uh, in Onera in uh, Grenoble, uh, 74, collected in the beautiful book of Van Dyck. And, um, and uh, here you, say, you see uh, the transition from uh, uh, a laminar flow to a turbulent flow where uh, is visualized this uh, vertical region. Well, this has been confirmed uh, by a lot of, uh, uh, lots of uh, numerical uh, uh, simulations, uh, and this is just a picture of one of the last ones, uh, uh, where uh, tubes, uh, filamentary structures, uh, are, um, are seen uh, to play an important role. That's why we focus on uh, filamentary structures and uh, allow me to give you a, a very, very simple uh, model just as a reference uh, for our- uh, Excuse call. me, Renzo. Filaments uh, are laminar or filaments are turbulent? Filaments are laminar in, okay. my, in my talk. So they are, uh, they are thought to be Present uh, in a background uh, in a background of fluid, uh, but uh, uh, they are in my talk. Uh, uh, they are considered to be um, kind of well, relatively speaking, uh, uh, stationary solutions. Although we know very well uh, that uh, they are not steady at all. They uh, deform, etc. But uh, as a model, as a model, uh, uh, we I don't think uh, of uh, uh, say uh, decomposition of velocity fields in a mean field and uh, average uh, um, oscillation. So I'm thinking of, um, of uh, average quantities all the time. So this is uh, just a model, an idealization. We have a tube made of a axis uh, C. Uh, it's a cross section. Uh, we take it uh, for simplicity to be very thin, very small and, uh, and uh, essentially circular the volume uh, V of the tube, and then we embed uh, this tube to form a knot in a three-dimensional space. Here we have a, an example of a link, and uh, the knot or link we refer to um, is uh, just uh, the physical support of a vorticity omega. Again, for simplicity, we imagine that uh, each uh, uh, 
uh, tube, each tubular knot uh, is uh, foliated by uh, vortex lines. Uh, and uh, the essential property here is that, um, that uh, vorticity is uh, as a zero normal component on the boundary of this uh, tube, uh, so that uh, the uh, tubular uh, boundary is a material surface. As I said, this is just the preliminary information to understand what uh, is going on later in the talk. So the vortex tangle is just the union of uh, these uh, knots and uh, links uh, that are made uh, by vorticity. And uh, in ideal condition, uh, it's uh, worth uh, remembering that the strength of this uh, tube, uh, i.e. circulation, is uh, conserved as well as uh, topology is conserved. Uh, of course, uh, we all care about the changes of topology due to reconnection and uh, viscous effects. Uh, and I will, uh, I will consider the change of topology uh, in su to some extent, uh, but I won't uh, consider uh, viscous uh, dissipation in my talk. It's also important to remember a quantity that has a topological uh, significance in uh, fluid mechanics, and that is uh, helicity. Helicity for a tangle is just uh, the integral of u dot uh, omega, u being the velocity field, uh, over the volume of vorticity. Uh, and this uh, eventually is extended uh, for localized fields. Uh, this is an important assumption. Uh, localized fields, uh, meaning a uh, tangle of uh, vortex filament, where vorticity is localized on these tubes. In topological interpretation of uh, helicity is rooted in the famous uh, celebrated work of Moffat, 1969, where helicity was uh, expressed in terms of uh, Gauss uh, linking numbers, LKIJ, which is a measure of the linkage between uh, tubes uh, I and tubes J. Uh, with uh, with uh, Keith, we extended this result to include the self-linking number, um, which is also a topological quantity that comes uh, from uh, um, the complexity of the vortex lines within uh, the tube and the tube embedding itself. So here I expressed the uh, helicity for localized fields. Uh, well, in that case, uh, we have uh, the gammas, uh, the circulation of each tube, and these two quantities, the self-linking number of each uh, tubular knot and the linking number between tubular knots. And uh, in case of localized fields, and in case of uh, tubes that are very thin, uh, then we can uh, eventually uh, reduce this uh, uh, expression uh, to this form uh, simply because omega uh, we can take it as a uniform uh, distribution on the cross section cross section say so small that can be integrated out uh, in this uh, circulation so we are left uh, with uh, a contribution of u along uh, the axis of these uh, tubes well, the linking number is uh, just uh, due to Gauss uh, and is measuring the linkage uh, between uh, tubes. Uh, and in the particular case of the picture is a Hopf link and uh, there is a negative crossing here. So is uh, minus one uh, the result. The self-linking number is uh, due to work of Calugariano extended by White and can be decomposed in two contribution, the writhing number and the total twist number. It's very important to remember these uh, two decomposition. Remember, self-linkage is uh, topological in character, whereas uh, is made by these two quantities, whereas uh, writhe and uh, total twist are geometric in character. So two global geometric quantities that uh, sum together give a topological quantity. Writhe, uh, without any formula, uh, is just a measure here of uh, the folding, of the coiling of uh, uh, the filament in space. Uh, and by C, I mean, uh, if you like, uh, uh, the baseline edge of this ribbon. And the twist uh, is a measure you see here, C and C star. So you see, Rife is a measure of a geometric curve in space. 
twist, however, is a measure of uh, uh, some, there is some thickness uh, of a ribbon, we refer to a ribbon, uh, so is uh, related to the winding of one line with respect to the other. So you may imagine the baseline of this ribbon and uh, the C star, the uh, push off, if you like, or the parallel line in the black uh, um, as the other edge of the ribbon. Or alternatively, you may think of C as the axis of our tube and C star any, uh, any uh, field line that is winding around the uh, central axis. So this is very important for the rest of my talk. Okay, and now I have a few pictures or a few uh, movies because uh, Lou Kaufman's talk suggested me to show you again this beautiful uh, experiment uh, by Lim. And uh, I give it uh, a different reading of this experiment, uh, which is very beautiful. I'm going to show it in a moment. Uh, you see the title, Topological Cascade. So there are two vortex rings you will see in the movie, one red and one uh, blue, that are uh, colliding one against the other. And uh, uh, after collision, you see that immediately there are a number of reconnections and uh, little ringlets uh, formed as a result. Now, of course, we have a, an immediate cascade of topology from two big rings uh, to a number of small rings, uh, simply because reconnections take place uh, due to the symmetry of the system instantaneously at all uh, points uh, around uh, the rings. Now, time to show you the picture, and uh, this is it. Uh, uh, so you see the Reynolds number is in water, you see the uh, shot of the two rings and the formation of two ringlets is uh, of course a very beautiful because uh, you can uh, see, I'll show it again, you see immediately uh, the transition from uh, one of two big topological structure to small structures and of course uh, uh, there is uh, it's important to understand uh, uh, what's going on in terms of uh, reconnections and topology and so I'm also pleased uh, to uh, show you the movie of the um, experiment done by the group of uh, William Irvine in Chicago about the production of a trefoil knot in water and the uh, further evolution of this uh, uh, structure. Now, if we observe, there is uh, uh, this uh, airfoil made uh, in the shape of a trefoil knot uh, that as a result uh, produce uh, uh, a, 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 a vortex uh, knot, a vortex uh, filament in the shape of a trefoil knot. And then uh, if you follow closely this uh, evolution, you will see that the filament strands uh, at certain point will reconnect uh, and the structure will form other structures uh, like uh, the ones we see it uh, now that analyze the show to be a hop uh, link and then further reconnections down to two separate uh, just visible rings and then down to full dissipation. So before moving to consider uh, topological aspects, I like uh, to duel on the reconnection process itself, because I think is very important in terms uh, of these uh, factors that I showed you before, writhe and uh, total twist, because of course, as I said at the beginning, we are keen on understanding the energy production and the Excuse energy me, transfer. Uh, and so it's uh, with just, just yes, one question. Yes. Uh, do you have an energy of reconnection uh, or it costs something or it's just not? No, no, it costs something. It costs something all the time there is a reconnection and the energy uh, has uh, two facets, if you like. One is that uh, there is an energy cost and that is due to dissipation. Although I mentioned the ideal uh, conditions uh, I worked in, I'm keen to, uh, uh, you know, to underline that uh, the, uh, viscous effects, uh, dissipation effects, or if you like in magnetic system, uh, resistive effects, uh, and in other contexts uh, like quantum fluids, uh, this costs something. Uh, 
On the other hand, uh, uh, there is not only the, uh, the, the, the issue of energy cost, but there is also the issue of energy transfer. All the time we have a reconnection, we have a change in the scale of the structure. So there is a kind of scaling law that brings us from uh, uh, large structure to small structures, to small structure down to evanescent uh, structure. And at each stage, uh, uh, there is uh, not only an energy cost, but there is also an energy transfer of the remaining part of the energy uh, through reconnection. Okay, so this is uh, the uh, reconnection experiment uh, done by the group of uh, Professor Alexienko exactly at the uh, Novorosibiosk, uh, and I'm very, very happy to show this movie. I did show this movie to many, many people around uh, all the time I had uh, the opportunity because I think is truly remarkable, and uh, I have a chance here to also um, uh, say hello to Pavel uh, Kuibin, a, a good friend of mine. Now here we see the vortex uh, filament that are approaching and they are modifying their mutual angle of inclination and they reconnect. It's a very great uh, piece of uh, information from uh, this uh, movie and I'm happy to show it again. You see here uh, the filament uh, strands are approaching and if I stop the movie here, you see that they are almost at an orthogonal um, angle. But then uh, as they get closer and closer, they modify themselves to get to what we will say anti-parallel. And then uh, look uh, at, the, uh, at, the, at the little, you know, the little frames, at the, oh, I'm sorry, I want to go back. Uh, the little frames, just when they are in an anti-parallel condition, you will see that in the few frames, they are counter-rotating, one against the other. And then there is a merging, and then there is a separation. Now, I want to spend uh, 10 minutes at the, uh, say, uh, graduate level, <laughs> discussion, uh, but with insight of my experience over the years, uh, not to propose a model of reconnection, which is uh, still undergoing, uh, but uh, uh, just the mechanics of vortex reconnection, at least until the moment where viscous effects can no longer be neglected. And in order to understand the mechanics, we have to start with the bios of our induction law. And this is due to simply the induction of the vorticity, which remember in our case is localized in tubes uh, for simplicity. And this is ideal, ideal version, say, uh, before reconnection. And uh, vorticity confined in this uh, uh, region of the vortex tube induces the velocity. And I assume here that I focus only on the velocity due to vorticity, assuming that the other contributions from velocity, say from, uh, um, uh, you know, from, uh, from translation, rigid translation, or other forms uh, of contributions uh, are neglected. Now, if I develop an asymptotic theory following Bachelor, chapter seven in Bachelor's book, uh, and actually, as I pointed out long time ago, was developed by Levi Civita uh, in Italy in uh, 1905. Um, well, uh, we can uh, express uh, this uh, bios of our induction law in uh, local terms uh, plus a global contribution. And the global contribution remains uh, finite. But if we approach uh, the vortex tube, so if we are very close with X, going very close to the tube uh, vorticity, then uh, these contributions is made of two parts, one given here and the other one given here. And uh, rho denotes the distance from the axis, uh, e theta, the azimutal uh, vector on the axis of the tube. And there is this term that contains uh, the radius of curvature uh, times this uh, log L over rho. L over rho, we can take it uh, as independent uh, from time, and it actually can be considered indeed as a constant. What is important here is to observe the effect uh, due to binormal contribution. So in other words, we can uh, express uh, the rotational velocity due to vorticity as made of two contributions. Uh, one, uh, the uh, theta contribution gives uh, 
just circulatory motion of uh, flow around the vortex without uh, creating any drift velocity, any translation of the vortex in the fluid. And the other one is the binormal contribution, which is responsible, at least locally, for the motion of the vortex tube and is proportional to curvature. Okay, so we take our tube, our tube, uh, and we put a reference frame on it, tangent, normal, binormal. We take uh, the vorticity uh, in this point aligned with the tangent, and here we have it. And uh, then uh, these two contributions are simply given by a rotational contribution around the cross section of the vortex and the drift velocity due to the binormal. I want to spend a few more minutes uh, just working on these two contributions at an elementary viewpoint uh, to understand what's going on for reconnection. Well, uh, as a mutual contribution, let me focus on this one first. The azimutal contribution, u theta, can be made, uh, say, can be distinguished in two con con uh, conditions. One uh, is when we have parallel vorticity. The vortex tubes are, are aligned with vorticity parallel. Uh, we may have different uh, circulations or equal circulations. And what uh, you see here are the stream, streamlines around these, uh, these uh, cores of vorticity that are coming out of your screen. And the streamlines are going around. Uh, so the flow goes around both uh, these uh, cores, independently from the uh, relative strength. Evidently, if one of the strengths is much greater than the other, is going to drag together the smaller uh, core or the less intense uh, core. So here we have a simulation done by Josserand and Rossi uh, not long ago, and uh, it sees it's a cross section. So it's basically a cross section of two straight uh, tubes, uh, and in red is vorticity and is color coded according to intensity. As, as you see, uh, being uh, parallel, they merge together in this fashion to form one single structure. There is no reconnection here. In order to have reconnection, remember, the filaments must, be, must move one against the other, so the UB term must be present. Let us consider the other case where we have attribution, so straight tubes, but antiparallel vorticity. Okay, anti-parallel vorticity, these are the streamlines. Uh, we may have different uh, uh, circulations uh, present and with different uh, uh, configuration of this pattern, you see here at the central point uh, in the, on the axis of symmetry in a, a very high strain due to the uh, uh, contribution of each streamlines at this point. Okay, well, uh, in undergraduate uh, calculation, uh, we have here a, a, a zoom in of this uh, picture, an enlargement of this picture, and in a P at the central point here, we have uh, a contribution from both uh, fields coming from uh, both uh, vortices, so we have to add up uh, these two circulatory uh, contributions. Okay, now I give you a very simple proof of um, anti-parallel condition. Assume uh, for simplicity that uh, the vortex uh, cores are not uh, yet uh, uh, totally close one another, are very close but not completely close so that we can uh, still, uh, uh, well, ignore uh, viscous uh, uh, dissipation. And so I'll use, uh, for this simple-minded proof, uh, the Bernoulli theorem. I put here my point P and uh, I use Bernoulli theorem that says that the pressure at P plus contribution from kinetic uh, energy density is constant on the streamline. Uh, then I do a little bit of geometry. I consider two elementary elements uh, two elements of these uh, vortex uh, filaments uh, approaching uh, this uh, point P, they get together because uh, they are oriented uh, with uh, a curvature, with a binormal contribution that are moving uh, the strands one against the other, so they have a, a curvature 
made so that they can move one against the other, and uh, this azimutal contribution one with respect to the other. And by simple geometrical information, we have uh, sense uh, uh, here, velocity must be at the maximum and the pressure goes to the minimum. The maximum condition for the velocity is attained when alpha uh, from a geometric configuration is uh, zero. And that proves uh, that, that these two arrows uh, uh, being alpha zero must be in oppositely oriented directions. That proves uh, the fact that they must be anti-parallel to optimize the process. Of course, is an optimal situation. Uh, reconnection may take place when they are close to anti-parallel situation, but remember what we saw in the movie. In the movie, we saw that uh, they were orthogonal, they were with some curvature, so they are still pushing one against the other, and at a certain point, they get anti-parallel and uh, counter-rotating exactly as I showed you in this streamline part. Now, um, there is a, a reconnection uh, a stage where viscosity plays an important role. And uh, we see here um, still some very weak vorticity that is, uh, um, that is uh, stretched away as they reconnect and they move uh, apart. They move apart again because their local curvature is such that the binormal component makes them moving away one another apart. And here is one of the uh, recent uh, um, uh, simulations uh, uh, done by the group of Fazel Hussein, uh, the vortex tubes at a certain point, they get uh, close together, they merge, there is uh, uh, this uh, a bridge uh, structure of a weak vorticity form that still uh, survives for some time. These tubes uh, do not show any structure inside, and this is of course uh, next step for all of us in terms of uh, uh, experiments, in terms of numerical simulation, and of course, in terms of analytical model. And this poses a very, very uh, difficult uh, questions. Now, let me pose uh, for a moment uh, to consider uh, a result uh, that I believe is important in this, uh, in this, uh, um, in this context. Uh, we can uh, prove, uh, uh, do it uh, Sumner's, uh, uh, Christian Lang and myself, we proved rife conservation in terms uh, of uh, anti-parallel reconnection. And the proof is based on uh, uh, assuming that uh, the axes of these tubes are, um, are modeled by polygonal curves. I won't uh, discuss the proof uh, because I noticed that uh, Dewitt Sumners is going to give a talk uh, next week and I'm uh, pretty sure that they will uh, spend some time on uh, the discussion of this mechanism that is relevant in many contexts, not only in vortex dynamics. So I leave to him uh, the mathematical proof of this statement. I just give you a very, very sketchy idea of the process. Well, if uh, we are going to be in an anti-parallel condition, then uh, assuming polygonal curves, we have to think that these uh, segments are going to approach uh, each other closely at a certain point annihilate and by annihilation they leave any writhe if there is a writhe present that there is one in this uh, particular projection unchanged so the local um, uh, the writhe uh, helicity the writhe uh, uh, during reconnection uh, remains uh, conserved under anti-parallel uh, reconnection. And this is uh, the statement of the theorem that uh, uh, Dewitt Sumner's uh, will, uh, uh, will discuss. The right of uh, the um, strands before reconnection uh, uh, is unchanged, remains conserved, and is equal to the right after reconnection. Well, we can extend this uh, to uh, including circulation, assuming that circulation are the same, uh, the circulation of the two tubes, uh, or the two uh, tubes with axes A and B uh, are the same. We can extend this immediately to right helicity, saying that right helicity remains conserved. 
but we know that helicity is not conserved under reconnection. So since uh, helicity uh, is made of linkage and self-linkage, uh, in the case of self-linkage for antiparallel reconnection, we can think that any change in helicity must be solely due to a change in intrinsic uh, twist. And this poses a further emphasis on the fact that we have to focus on the internal structure. This is a more recent simulation of reconnection where you see only part of this reconnection, the blue tube reconnect with the red tube into this hairpin uh, filament or tubular form. And uh, we have to focus on the internal redistribution of twist um, upon uh, reconnection. Okay, um, I now want to move, uh, having said something about the role of uh, uh, Rife and the role of twist uh, under reconnection, I want to consider a situation where filaments are more complicated than the simple vortex ring or helical vortex uh, uh, or the straight vortex, which are the only three cases where we have uh, uh, some mathematical results, uh, remember. Okay, well, uh, defects, uh, vortex defects in condensates and uh, vortex uh, filaments in superfluids have been uh, more intensely studied in the last 20 years or so. Uh, this is a beautiful picture of a sort of uh, um, complex networks of these defects uh, in, uh, in a uniform background uh, situation. And here is uh, the presentation by Carlo Barenghi. We are in China, in Beijing, <laughs> uh, a year ago. And uh, Carlo presented this uh, new and uh, collaborator. Here is uh, Rob Sharine, um, uh, author of Not Plot uh, software that is used uh, very much by many of us uh, to talk about knots and links. Uh, and uh, um, uh, we have here the presentation of the fact that uh, doing simulation of a a turbulence, a turbulent tangle of filaments in superfluids. Uh, uh, he was able. The group of Carlo was able. Were able to uh, extract uh, a, a number of uh, elements uh, showing uh, knottedness and linkage, and uh, knots uh, were found uh, to a great uh, degree of complexity. By great degree of complexity, I truly mean enormous knots, knots uh, with polynomials degree of the order of 30. Uh, so well beyond uh, any classification we have so far. And uh, this picture uh, is a little bit, uh, there is a little bit of a romantic me thinking when Keith uh, Moffat told me when I was young that uh, no such knots could be found in any fluid uh, because uh, uh, of the role of viscosity they would, may, would have made them uh, so immediately evanescent. Well, here we have uh, the proof that uh, the structures uh, uh, indeed they may not last long, but that they can form and have a great deal of complexity. That gives us uh, strength uh, to move on and consider that helicity uh, may not be sufficient <coughs> to describe uh, topological uh, complexity. Well, helicity, remember, as uh, I showed you uh, uh, so far, is function of strength, so there is some information about physics, and uh, uh, topology through linkage. Uh, but uh, uh, we know the limits of the linking numbers. Indeed, this was recognized as early as 1867. This is an original drawing of uh, Maxwell who pointed out, uh, uh, you can read it in his uh, second volume of his uh, treaty, treatise on um, electricity and magnetism. Uh, he has a section on uh, Gauss uh, uh, linking formula derivation, uh, by the way, rediscover or proposed by himself independently because Gauss didn't, uh, didn't give us any proof of the fact that the linking number is a topological quantity. Very remarkably, Maxwell says that yes, he is a strong invariant of topological character. However, for Bormian cases, or what we would uh, uh, call Maxwell link, 
that uh, somehow for the twist of history are called the heighted uh, link, uh, um, they still, uh, linking number is still zero. So linking number is a good topological uh, detector, but not as good as we would have wished because it cannot uh, distinguish a situation that is uh, displayed here. Three unlinked uh, loops, uh, three linked unseparate Unseparably, uh, inseparably linked uh, loops and two um, linked uh, filaments. Uh, all these three systems have linking number zero. Uh, so not only uh, the problem is uh, with the relative linkage, but we may have linking different from zero, but total contribution from linking number zero. And that means that uh, if uh, these two quantities are zero, then evidently helicity is zero, despite uh, of having a, a topological complexity present in the fluid. So next step is uh, as obvious as a history of knot theory would suggest to go to knot polynomials. And this is the piece of work uh, uh, Xin Liu uh, from Beijing and myself um, have embarked to do. Now, before uh, showing the result, uh, I want to use this half a slide to do a recap of the polynomials, so not polynomial. And I pretend uh, very arrogantly uh, for half in a half a slide to give you the essence of a uh, uh, not polynomial theory. Okay, I will refer to Humphrey PT polynomial. Um, it is a polynomial in two variables. And for the moment, uh, for this uh, slide, they say, no physics is concerned. So let's uh, pause for a moment about physics and let's focus on not theory. Humphrey PT is an acronym coming from contribution from several authors, including uh, um, uh, the, the person who taught me not theory in Cambridge, Licorice, and then Krzyzewski, Trachik, uh, and then Millet, uh, and uh, Okeanu, and other, um, Host and uh, Yete. Anyway, um, this is a polynomial introduced more or less in the late 80s and uh, following Jones. And uh, um, we have uh, to use uh, two skin relations. In other words, two relations to define a polynomial. <coughs> These polynomials, uh, finite uh, terms, uh, Laurent polynomial. The first relation is uh, trivial. It says that the polynomial of the unknot is one. Okay, that's easy for me. The second relation says uh, that uh, if I switch uh, given crossing by considering, say, your preferred tangle, you choose uh, an element, you extract uh, an element, a component in your tangle, you project it on a diagram, any diagram, because remember, this polynomial is going to be a topological invariant of uh, the knot or link we consider. For instance, in this case, uh, the picture shows an unknot because uh, there are, uh, you see an overcrossing here, an overcrossing here, and an overcrossing here. So it actually is an unknot, is not a knot. But anyway, we consider uh, a, the diagram. Uh, we put uh, um, uh, um, algebraic uh, signs, plus minus one on uh, uh, these, uh, um, these uh, crossing sites according to some um, sign convention. And, uh, and then uh, uh, we have to consider switching uh, the crossing, one crossing at a time, any crossing we choose from an overcrossing to an undercrossing or the other way around and put it in relation to a smoothing. Well, in words, it sounds complicated, but let's do an example. So the example is as simple as it can be. Let's start with the unknot. And I know what you're thinking. Well, the unknot, come on, Renzo, I know the unknot. The polynomial of the unknot is one. Yes, good guess. So the unknot can be deformed. For example, in this uh, figure of eight, I call it gamma, gamma plus because there is a positive crossing apparent here. And uh, of course, it's equivalent to a gamma minus negative crossing apparent here. But all three are the unknot. And so the polynomial of these uh, configurations is one. Okay, I use just this relation, no uh, use of the second relation. Now I want to use the second relation in the most simple possible form. So I start with the unknot again. I know the polynomial of gamma plus is here, is one. Uh, 
But then I want to apply this second relation to the only crossing that is visible in the diagram is this. And so I switch the crossing, as you see here, I switch gamma one, gamma plus into a gamma minus configuration. And then I want to use the smoothing of this crossing so that the crossing disappears magically. As I said, this is just pure mathematics. There is no physics. And then I get, as a result, by smoothing the crossing, I get the U2. This is a new configure, new topology because these U2 represent two unknotted links for which I do not have a polynomial. Indeed, I can find it by applying this second relation. You see, the polynomial of this configuration, gamma plus, is known, is one. So I have A times one minus A minus one times the P of gamma minus is also one. So minus A minus one equals Z of the polynomial of U2, which I don't know. So I get the P of U2. And this is the polynomial of this new configuration. Okay, well, by now you have uh, uh, on Not Atlas and many websites, you have all these polynomials worked out for uh, all sorts of knots up to a number of crossing that I don't remember now is uh, say probably 10 or, or maybe some 11 uh, links as well, of course, not only knots. Um, here, let me go immediately to the a bit of physics. And we have a result that I'm not going to prove it because it's pretty elaborated and you can read it in the paper and is the following. If K denotes a, denotes a vortex knots of axis C and helicity H of K, then E to H of K, so E to this uh, form of helicity that I showed you before in case of uh, localized the vorticity to thin tubes uh, appropriately rescaled, of course there is a gamma circulation there that is not present, satisfies under plausible statistical hypothesis the skin relations of the Homfley PT polynomial. Uh, it is very important because we can express this polynomial Homfley PT now in terms of some physics and I show you what I mean by that. Well, first of all, we can interpret these polynomials in terms of the quantities that I mentioned before, writhe and twist. Somehow we can relate A and Z, the two dummy variables that we had before as uh, just pure variables in a mathematical expression. Now we can express them in terms of, uh, them in terms of uh, twist and writhe. And, uh, so we can express or interpret physically the second skin relation as uh, a relationship between uh, writhe and twist. And more importantly, we have uh, Jones polynomial around and we can interpret uh, uh, the skin relation for Jones polynomials. And in particular, since Homfley PT is a polynomial of two variables that can be reduced to a polynomial of one variable to Jones, we can interpret this reduction in terms of the framing of the Jones polynomial physically in terms of a, a relationship strict relationship between writhe and twist. Okay, what, uh, um, what that uh, uh, does uh, tell us in terms of uh, vortex knots? Okay, let me be uh, a little bit more specific. So, so first of all, notice that uh, by doing this transformation, we have a polynomial uh, Homfley PT that is now adapted to our physics, so it becomes a function not only of linking number but of the knot, of the knot type itself, and the contribution from physics through gamma. Now let me do an example. This is a very very simple example. It's not based on experiments whatsoever. So take it uh, for just a, a simple illustration of what I mean. Well, uh, we have here some constants, don't pay attention to this, but the end result is that A and the Z before can be related to right and twist. And for simplicity, I take average right and average twist in a tangle as a half, and then there are coefficients that are related to the statistical approach we did in order to recover our formula. So end result is that the Z becomes this expression, and A becomes this expression. In other words, we can give numbers to these variables. So the polynomial not only 
um, uh, distinguish knots uh, with, of course, uh, uh, due fully, uh, fully a topological invariant. It has drawbacks uh, as uh, linking numbers have, but in other, in other words, uh, not only can uh, distinguish knots qualitatively, but can distinguish not quantitatively because we give numbers to these expressions. So an ensemble n number of uh, unlinked, unknotted loops uh, u, un, as a polynomial value that is uh, this number. And uh, notice it diminishes with increasing n. Okay. And then if we go to the knot table, we have the standard home flea polynomial for the positive hop link. And if we use uh, this approach and use this number, we have this polynomial. So the polynomial of the negative Hopflink has a different uh, value. The left hand trefoil knot, uh, this value, the right hand trefoil knot, the figure of eight knot, the whitehead, uh, um, the whitehead link, and so on and so forth. Can we make any sense of these numbers? When we got these numbers first time, I was very puzzled because uh, we cannot, uh, or we couldn't uh, recognize any order in that. But if we go to the experiment of, uh, uh, of the trifoil vortex uh, uh, filament, we see that there is, uh, through a sequence of reconnection, we start with the trifoil, we have a single reconnection that uh, uh, makes us, uh, give us uh, a, a hop link, and then the unknot, very convoluted in a space, but is an unknot, and then eventually two separate links. Well, uh, I'll be very brief here, but we can think of these are all these knots as part of a bigger family of torus knots. So not drawn on a mathematical torus, as more or less the shape I showed you here in the, in the diagrams. I did, uh, we did with uh, Simone Zucker, uh, who um, has a very, very uh, nice uh, code for uh, vortex defects in Bose-Einstein condensates. He performed an experiment at the time. We couldn't start from the trefoil, now, now we can. And at the time, in this paper 17, we published these results starting from the hop flick, but we could push um, the cascade to three links. So you see, again, we have enough link, the unknot, two separate links, and eventually the formation of a third link through single reconnection events. Now, this suggests the fact that we can assume a single anti reconnection event takes place at a time, and a family of uh, torus knots and links uh, that uh, are formed by uh, producing a reconnection at each time on a strand, on a on pair of strands, so that we go from, say, the uh, torus knot 27 to the link 26 and knot 25 and so on and so forth, till the formation of uh, uh, separate rings, eventually three, four, et cetera, et cetera. And then we can apply our theory to this uh, sequence. So let me uh, tell you that the result of this is very nice we get uh, an expression, a mathematical expression, in terms of functions of uh, twist density and writh density. And uh, these functions are totally known. So we can compute numerically these functions for all the sequence of torus knots and links we see here. And when we do this, we saw that the numerical value for the Humphrey PT polynomial for the trifoil is 150. Remember, now we have an exact information of the writhe and the average twist present, uh, let's say the average writhe and total torsion present. And then uh, 1.5 1 goes to 1, 1, 1 1.48. So we make sense of this cascade now in terms of topology as well, a, a quantified topological cascade. Now, uh, the sequence uh, is uh, present here. For this assumption, I just made a very brief remark saying that if we make different 
uh, assumptions on these numerical values by assuming different values of uh, right and twist the present. Uh, for the same class of torus knots, we find the same monotonic decrease. Maybe we have a shift in the, uh, in the vertical axis of the values, but the same monotonic decrease is confirmed. And this is consistent with a very simple analysis, for example, here done on the bending energy curvature, energy of these uh, structures and other, other energy types uh, consistently. Well, if we compare the numerical values uh, by our approach done uh, uh, similarly for Jones or other polynomials, uh, we find that at least uh, for numerical purposes, Onfle PT seems to be a good marker for these, uh, for these uh, structures. Although I have to say that Alexander was used, the Alexander polynomial was uh, used recently by Carlo Barenghi and proved to be pretty good as well. So this is really research uh, ongoing. Let me conclude. Uh, uh, we uh, proposed to use adapted uh, uh, Humphrey PT polynomial to quantify topological cascade of vortex structures, and this proves to be the best quantifier because, as I showed you here, the difference uh, between one uh, 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 topology, one knot type, and the other is uh, well marked and probably easier to uh, capture the, in a numerical analysis in diagnostics. And uh, this is consistent. This is consistent. By the way, also interesting is uh, to compare the uh, rate of change in time of these differences, uh, not only considering this cascade prog progress, but other different types uh, of. Uh, uh, topological transitions. And this is piece of research that is now going on with uh, Shin. Uh, so the, in summary, the polynomial provides a monotonic behavior consistently. The numerical values are robust and reliable markers for um, possible diagnostics. And uh, as I said, uh, for the few knots uh, that I showed you, uh, the, um, there is a way to, um, to estimate uh, the transition between one and, and the other, and this uh, transition rate uh, is more or less constant for the class of knots I consider. But of course, uh, this is a very specific case. Um, it's interesting to notice uh, that a very uh, actually identical cascade has been found uh, in 2013, same time of uh, William Irvine's work uh, in DNA plasmids uh, under uh, recombinant uh, action of uh, site-specific uh, enzymes uh, on which I'm sure Dewitt Sumners uh, will, uh, um, will spend a few words uh, because it uh, brings a, a very interesting uh, connection with our case or the case of reconnection of magnetic structures. But as I uh, mentioned, would uh, that uh, path be unique? Well, certainly not. And uh, would that path be optimal? Well, optimal. Optimal in which sense? Well, there are many ways to define uh, what is an optimal path to cascade in terms of energy, in terms of topology. I don't know. Well, there is uh, a possibility, for example, that one of these uh, um, knot types, uh, the torus knot 2.5, may decay to form a connected sum of the trifoil and, uh, and the hop link. And if uh, we were going towards uh, this uh, other route, uh, we would find that uh, our numerical values would equally decrease, decrease monotonically. And so we are puzzled by the fact that uh, maybe our polynomial approach uh, is uh, useful to quantify these transitions, but would that be useful to uh, select the best possible path? Of course, in terms of energy, that means, in other words, in terms of entropy and uh, disorder. And this is a piece of research that is uh, ongoing, not only by us, by other groups, uh, and not many. And uh, we are confident uh, to be able to show you some new results uh, in, the, in the year to come. 
Let me conclude here with uh, just a selection of uh, references uh, so that everybody can uh, um, inspect uh, the papers I mentioned, and I apologize if I refer to my own work uh, mainly, uh, but I think uh, that is consistent uh, with the talk. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. So, so thank you very much for a beautiful talk and please questions. May I ask you one? Please, please. Uh, okay, Renzo, uh, could you tell us, uh, do you have all these torus knots or this is not obliged? No, 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 this is not obliged at all. Um, well, of course, uh, maybe for some reason, uh, remember the picture of Lim, the movie, uh, the experiment of Lim, who, by the way, is uh, carrying out uh, right now numerical uh, work on the very same experiment he did in the 90s. Well, <clears throat> um, for some symmetry reason, etc., they might be uh, the ideal cascade uh, uh, processes, but not at all, not at all. We all know that uh, uh, fluid structures are far more complicated than forming knots and links, and they may form complicated knots, as uh, I showed you in the work of um, Carlo Barenghi's group, uh, uh, by the way. I like, uh, if I can go quickly to that slide, I like to advertise uh, his uh, result because it's quite uh, nice. And indeed, they found a very complex knot. Not at all, you see here. Mm -hmm. They uh, they got the, the knot, they have the data, uh, data from uh, the numerical simulation so they can somehow go backwards uh, in this uh, from uh, these uh, inc incredibly complex uh, um, configurations. And that is done with the help uh, also of uh, Rob Shorin's knot plot and other relaxation techniques uh, that they employed. So you have uh, a configuration that is extremely complicated. You extract your data and with some software, you relax it, uh, so to speak, <clears throat> so that you can recognize the knot type. Once you have the knot type, you have to do another process. You have to implement uh, uh, these polynomials in order to either identify the knot type through the polynomials or um, give numerical values to these polynomials Nominal to uh, eventually to assess uh, uh, the approach we offer. Uh, I'm asking that because uh, <clears throat> just some some remark that if you would stay only in uh, Taurus knots uh, region, so then probably you know that there is uh, some work which can identify the Humphrey polynomial of torus knots with a called dig path, one dimensional, very simple dig path when uh, you fix the area below the curve. So there is very nice interpretation due to Gorski and others. And, but unfortunately, this is not much explored by physicists. Well, I know, I, and I, I, I thank you, Sergey, for pointing out that because I know you've been doing work on that too. And uh, um, thank you, by the way, for pointing out that work to me and uh, is indeed a very interesting uh, area of research. Clearly, if you confine uh, to, say, uh, the Taurus uh, knots class, uh, then uh, your mathematics, at least uh, in my case, is simpler. By the way, um, I can't remember if I did it uh, in my last slides, but um, we just uh, finished a piece of work that has been published recently with, um, with um, um, uh, Sorry, I just uh, went out of uh, Chiara Alberti. So uh, the relevance, the effects of winding number of uh, different knot types, and that is done in the context of vortex dynamics, ideal vortex dynamics with uh, uh, with the uh, with Bio Savar and uh, desingularizing uh, Bio Savar. So that is a piece of work you find at the at the end of the selected references I give you. I gave you, and uh, um, in in the case of uh, torus knots and links, of course, uh, by symmetry, you can uh, you can make some progress. Otherwise, it's <laughs> clearly very difficult. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, please, more questions. 
Uh, Renzo, may I ask you to send your slides? Uh, uh, if you don't mind, I would uh, upload it uh, on the website of our conference. I am, I am very happy. I have to tell you very honestly, very rarely I show references at the end of my talk because it's so, uh, you know, self-promoting. Uh, but because of this, I think it makes sense to have uh, also the slide of references to help uh, young people. So with pleasure, I will send you, you. The, uh, the compressed file, uh, hoping that is not above uh, uh, maybe eight megabytes or so, and then the, mm -hmm. um, certainly, Nikolai. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, Renzo. Can you see this uh, in in your cascade the transition to chaotic behavior? Well, uh, uh, not well. Remember, our approach is so simple and so initial that uh, that what you suggest uh, is in my mind, <laughs> but uh, but I cannot say that I've uh, done. Uh, any work like, uh, like dragon bomb stuff something like that uh, yeah sure sure uh, but if uh, well you provoke me because i i know you are a very creative oh. mind and uh, for those uh, creative people i can say i mentioned very briefly in the stating the theorem with xin liu on the adapted polynomial that uh, we use the um, uh, some simple uh, statistical assumption. Now, of course, in this statistical assumption, the implication is that there is no preference, uh, particular preference during reconnection. We take, uh, uh, you know, the smoothing of the crossings uh, as uh, uh, possible isotropically in all directions. But you may have systems, uh, indeed we have system in the statistical mechanics where you may, uh, you know, insert particular rules. And so if you insert particular rules for reconnection, for example, anti-parallel forcing, anti-parallel reconnection, taking care of the right uh, conservation proved by, by DeWitt and others uh, that I mentioned, et cetera, et cetera. If you do that, you can um, uh, revise uh, these uh, numerical values in light of these, uh, of these uh, assumptions. And that uh, I think is worth doing but of course, it's a piece of work. And uh, you go far uh, beyond that uh, in thinking, of course, of uh, chaotic uh, behaviors. I think would be, uh, it has been in the past, and maybe now after 20 or more years, is uh, again time to push people in dynamical systems to do this, uh, yeah, right. to do this uh, study. Uh, because uh, they did it in the, you know, in the maybe in the 80s, 90s, uh, but now uh, I'm not so sure. So it's a good, good time to have them on board with us, of course, uh, for this uh, big, big problem. <laughs> Thank you.